Hey everyone, you caught me eating as I always am. Uh, welcome back to Bedra Station. I'm back from vacation. I was in Cyprus for a few weeks uh, with my family, which was amazing, but it's also good to be back as well. It's sunny in London, which is a shocker, uh, but it will probably change in like five minutes to torrential rain. So um, let's just see how the light goes. But today we're going to talk about what's new with iOS 15. iOS 15 was released this week and I'm going to tell you some of the top new features including a revamped notification system, a brand new Safari design and newly enhanced maps plus a lot more. So let's get started. Oh by the way I'm wearing um, a sleeveless top in the UK which is pretty advantageous but I'm holding on to what's left of the summer so don't complain. So FaceTime has been updated considerably in iOS 15. It's now brought in line with other video conferencing apps such as Zoom. For example, now when you're on a FaceTime call, you can use it in portrait mode so you can have a bit of a background blur effect. It's not meant to completely blur the background completely, but it just gives you a bit more depth in your FaceTime calls as well, like your pictures and your videos. And with FaceTime, you can create FaceTime links so you can include them in calendar invites. But for the first time since FaceTime has been released, now people that don't use iPhones, if they just primarily use desktops or Android devices, now they can join in on FaceTime as well because they can click on those links and join in on uh, FaceTime calls through their web browser as well. So that's so much more exciting. We've got a group of friends and two of them are using Android phones. I love to tease them all the time, but uh, now we can include them on our FaceTime group calls as well. Also on those group FaceTime calls, you'll be able to use spatial audio. So whoever's talking will pop up more prominently and it'll sound like for the first time that they're closer to you as well. And there's two new mic settings on FaceTime. There's voice isolation, which basically cuts out all the ambient noise. And there's wide spectrum too, which um, pulls in sounds from all around you. I don't know if you'd want to have that feature on. Um, I can't think of a situation where you want to hear all the, the background noise, but there you go. It's there for you. Now notifications has been completely redesigned. It's much more elaborate, much more customizable and you'll be able to manage your notifications better depending on how you're spending your day. If you use the do not disturb option, that now gives you options to allow certain people or certain apps to come through. And for example, if you have got do not disturb on, you'll see a note at the bottom of iMessage. If you're messaging that person, it says that they, they do not want to be disturbed. But you can override that message if you want to, or you could turn off that whole feature as well. And this new notification system is called Focus. So they've already got some preset for you. You can even create your own as well and completely customize them to how you want. My favorite thing about Focus is that you have a new scheduled summary feature. So what you can do is have notifications delivered to you at a certain time of the day. And you can have as many of these set up as you want. I'm trialing it with uh, every two hours, I get a summary of my notifications and allow certain apps that I use a lot. It even tells you which apps you get the most notifications for and you can select them. So say for example, news, emails, messages, Instagram, things like that. I find that having this switched on and not receiving messages throughout the day uh, I can see without being disturbed too often. And it also uses machine learning to understand what your interests are and make that more prominent in that scheduled summary too. An amazing new feature called Live Text using Apple's computer vision technology has been introduced in iOS 15. So if you see something on a sign, for example, and you go to take a picture, there's a text icon that appears. And when you click on that text, it retrieves all the text that's on that sign and then you can either copy it or translate it. It's super useful. And it also works with pictures you've already taken in your camera roll, even before iOS 15. So if there's text in there, you can just simply highlight the text that's within the picture. And if there's a link, you can um, click on the link and it'll take you to a website. If there's an address, it'll take you to maps, a phone number, you can call straight from that picture. It's insane. So I think this is going to be really useful in the future if you're on the go, you see a leaflet, someone's giving you a leaflet or something like that, and you need to know where it is. Instead of typing it out on maps where to go, open your camera app, click on the text icon, 
and then the address is highlighted and then you click on maps. It's so easy. Photos has been updated as well, predominantly the photo memories section. This isn't a feature, I'll admit, that I don't use very often, but you know where you can go to create slideshows of your previous albums? Well, now it links with Apple Music and it's much more elaborate and customizable again, but in the For You tab in Photos, it will generate a relevant song from your Apple Music library. You do need Apple Music for this. Uh, I don't know if it's going to allow Spotify in the future, but it's really fun to play around in, in if you want to create a collage video for family, for example. I think they're the only ones that would probably appreciate it. Safari has become much easier to use, especially with one hand, if you just want to use one hand, because the URL uh, bar, the address bar, is no longer at the top, it's at the bottom. So you can text and the address bar is right above it meaning that you've got more space along the top as well. Uh, this does take a lot of getting used to, for example, Rissi doesn't like it, but uh, once you're used to it, it's so much easier. And you can always turn this feature off as well and return it to the top. But also with the URL bar, um, you can see which page you're on and you can swipe through the different tabs a lot easier as well. And you can group tabs into certain categories too. And for the first time, Safari extensions has arrived. So if you have extensions set up on your desktop, I have one that looks for certain discount codes during the checkout process. So I'm very much looking forward to that coming out. You won't see your favorite extensions being released straight away on the iPhone, but they will be coming soon now that it's available. Apple Maps data is getting so much more richer now. It has much more street level details and also there's custom designed icons for certain landmarks, for example. And if you use Maps for driving, it will now show you a 3D way to um, use intersections if there's multiple lanes, for example. So it'll be a lot easier to see which lane that you should be in. And using public transport too, it will now tell you exactly where to get off when you're coming out of the station. And you can use your phone with augmented reality to see where you are and which direction you should be going as well. I don't know if I will be using that feature, especially in the middle of London, but um, I'm definitely going to be trying it out. I'll let you know how I get on with that. Shared with you is not so much a feature, but it's a result of everything that is being shared um, to you from your friends and family. So if they've been sharing photos in the Photos app, you'll see a Shared with you tab. When you go in there, it will show you everything that everyone has ever shared to you. And this is also the same for news, podcasts, safari, TV, and music. So it's a good way to see exactly what everyone's been sharing with you. Spotlight has become much more intuitive as well. That's when you uh, swipe down and you can do any kind of search or calculation. So it has a fresh new design with more detail. If you look for a celebrity, for example, it will be much more in depth, pull information from, for example, IMDb image searches as well. And if you put in a friend's name, for example, it will show you photos and WhatsApp messages from them too. So it's much more in depth now. The health app has a really good update, um, specifically around sharing. So now you can share your health data. Now this is particularly good if you have a elder mem member of the family um, and you're quite worried about their health. They monitor their health, they input their data if they're if they're good at that or if they have a watch, you can see all the data regarding them. They have to willingly share it with you, obviously. But it will notify you if they've fallen, if any unusual trends. There's also a new walking steadiness metric. So it kind of analyzes if you're walking a bit funny, if it's starting to, and if that problem's starting to grow. And you'll also get notified for that as well. You'll also be able to store your COVID-19 tests and vaccination records, providing that the vaccine provider enables it. So you'll be able to store everything within the health app and so it will be easily accessible. Finally, iCloud Plus. Now, if you already pay for iCloud Space, for example, there is a massive upgrade which is completely free of charge. So there's new features like generating a dummy email or a temporary email in order to sign up to a website and everything gets delivered to your actual email address without the website knowing your original address. And you can disable those email addresses as well. You also have the new iCloud Privacy Relay, which basically encrypts all internet traffic leaving your device so that no one can see your data. It's kind of like a VPN, not exactly, but it's, it, it is kind of like a VPN. And my favorite thing about iCloud Plus is that you can create your own domains now completely free of charge. 
So I've got a Gmail account for pedrisi.com, for example, and now I can do that absolutely free with iCloud Plus. So there's a lot of other new features as well. I'll include a link of the full list of new features. There's some that weren't released this week, which was expected, but Apple do say that they're gonna release very soon. For example, SharePlay. That means if you're FaceTiming with someone, you can share and watch a movie or music at the same time together. I don't know why I'd wanna do that. Maybe if you're in a long distance relationship and you wanna see each other watching films, or, I, I don't know, but it, it should be interesting. But another good feature about SharePlay is that you can finally share each other's screens. So I've got a lot of family members that have trouble with their iPhones or iPads. So now I'll be able to see their screen and guide them through any support issues. But that is it for this week. I will definitely be examining iOS 15, looking for some tips and secrets because there's always great things that are tucked in to these software updates. But I'll be releasing a separate video about that. But thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.